Hello, I'm Benjamin, and welcome to the Magic School Bus, or as my wife likes to call it, our firstborn child. Uh, we made this uh, teardrop sort of kind of trailer uh, camper uh, about three years ago when we were graduating from college. We did it in our last semester of our senior year while finals were happening and all that stuff, and right before we got married. Promptly after graduating, we took this bad boy out on a on a ride uh, all the way down to California, from, from St. Louis to California, uh, and, and plenty of national parks in between. It was a fun time. Uh, the, what you should know before we begin this tour in earnest is that this isn't made to be the perfect camper. It, it was made to, to get a couple things done. It was made to be functional, it was made to be cheap, and it was made to be within our capabilities. Am I forgetting anything else there, honey? I believe that's it. Yeah, so as long as it checked those three boxes, as long as it worked and as long as it did what we needed it to do, that's the way it is. So if there's if there's anything that you see right off the bat that doesn't look normal, well, that's because we didn't need it to be perfect. We just needed it to be worked. We were college students, right? This is the this is the ramen trailer equivalent, but but boy, does it really get the job done. So the first thing you probably want to know is what's it what's it on? And you see this all the time with DIY teardrop camper trailer things. It's on a four by eight Harbor Freight trailer, foldable, doesn't fold now. There's no storing this away nice and nice and easy, but this worked just fine for, for our needs. Uh, had no problem towing it on the highways. We repacked the bearings with grease, uh, with fresh grease and it's been holding up just fine. Um, the frame itself is a wooden stud frame. We used one by fours, I think. There's some insulation in there. Uh, we used plywood skin to kind of hold it together, probably quarter inch, but I mean, it's been three years, uh, but I think that's what it was. Um, the door that you see here is a uh, not your typical camper door. It's got, uh, it, it comes from a RV. This would be an RV storage thing, and, and it's actually not supposed to open sideways, but it opens up. So we put a camper door in here because these things only actually have doors on, or door handles on one side because you're not really expecting anybody to have to open a storage door from the inside, but we, we retrofitted it with this, have a little bit of wood and some caulking in there. Does the trick for us. We can lock it from the inside. We can, we can use it from the inside. Works perfectly. Come around this way and I'll show you. Oh, we've got electrical hookups on the camper. Uh, just simple, oh, I can't remember what it is. The lowest one that you can plug into at a campsite, okay? So not the big kind of fancy adapter you need for it. Just plug it right in and it works. And we've got a uh, socket outside, we've got a socket sockets in the kitchenette, and we've got sockets uh, on the outside here. Uh, you see in this window, this window came off of an RV that I picked out of a scrapyard. Uh, me and a buddy went out there and just took a couple windows off of an RV and bought them for uh, probably like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, they worked just fine, went in there, no problem. Come around to this side, you'll see the same thing. We opted to not do a door on this side just because we're trying to save on costs. The window is fine and we can hop over each other. That works for us. Come around here and you will see this is this is the place where we will enter our kitchenette area. Um, we've got these little latches to make sure that our, our seal here that we used, uh, which is a, uh, I think it's something you get from the store uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot for like repairing your car door. It, it can put a seal on there. So we just put put that on there, put some silicone in to make sure that the seal was nice and good and strap it down. Not too tight, but strap it down with, with these guys that we made. And then this, you might notice this shape. It's the shame, same shape that's on our door. We took the latch off of the storage door uh, and used that for the latch of our uh, that kitchenette because nobody needs to get out of the kitchenette. This is just a one side thing. Both of them locked, so there is some security with that, uh, and that's great. Uh, this up here is a piano hinge. Uh, this is uh, doesn't actually have any uh, metal like mechanisms that you would expect for a regular hinge. Um, it's actually one piece of plastic that's that is meant to go back and forth, uh, and it's waterproof. So that was a real big big plus for us. It's been working fine for the three years that we've had it. Uh, up top, you will see we've got a vent here. We don't have a fantastic fan in there. That was a little more out of our price range. Uh, we've got a, a vent there, but that works fine. There's a fan up in there that we've rigged to battery. You'll see that inside. And then also we've got this uh, sunroof. 
That was a bit of a trick because this is actually off of the back of an old truck. Pulled that out of the scrapyard too. Um, it's not actually made for water being directly pooling on top of this. We had some leaking issues, but we resolved those with a little bit of extra silicone and just making sure that we dry it off after a hard rain. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the outside, honey, unless you see anything else. We've got this, we've got this, uh, I didn't point this out, uh, the jack stand out here. I can't remember where we got it, but it, it goes up and down and rolls sideways once you're in the campsite and when you're trying to tow it. So yeah, good leveling. So all told, this thing weighs about 800 pounds, which is really nice because just about anything that has any kind of towing capacity can do it, can tow it. We used my, our parents, well, my parents' uh, minivan to tow it all the way across the country and had no problems. The other cool thing about it being that light and it being this small is that when you get to a campsite, I mean, if you're not very good at backing in, I mean, I had no problems, of course, um, but if you're not very good at backing it in, you can just pop the, the whole thing off the hitch and then just move it around yourself. You can just lift up on it and it's pretty easy and it'll, it'll roll. No problem. So yeah, that was that was very beneficial uh, when going to campsites and getting things just to the right place where they needed to go. Okay, so the other thing that you might be wondering, and maybe one of the most important things, is how is this whole thing waterproof? Right? We made it out of we made it out of wood, and wood exposed the elements is one not waterproof, uh, and two can can rot because of the water. Um, the answer is we did a technique called poor man's fiberglass. It has been used on uh, making canoes and stuff, and it's been used for even making uh, waterproof aircraft, like for wings and stuff, uh, way, way back in the day. And, and what you do is you'll have some sort of uh, medium, some sort of fibrous thing. For our case, we use bed sheets. You'll attach it to whatever you've got, and then you'll paint over it, many layers. So what we did was we took bed sheets from a, a hotel that was nearby where we were working, uh, asked them if they had any old nasty bed sheets. We washed them. We then uh, put them in the right size and put them in these places. You can kind of see the seams where we overlapped them. Um, and we stuck them to the wood using a mixture of 50-50 water and tight bond, heavy duty wood glue. Um, and we stuck them there. And once they're stuck, we paint them, gallons and gallons of, of paint. We used white and we used uh, a bunch of black until it was uh, totally covered. Uh, and until so you can't really even tell the, you can't even really see the, the grain of the sheets. It's just, it's just paint. Um, and then our final color, we did, we did this yellow uh, to end it all up. So let's, let's open it up and check out what's going on inside, shall we? Wow. So inside the trailer, pretty much the only thing we do in here is sleep. Um, so this mattress, really quite comfortable. We just got it from Walmart. Uh, our key things were it had to be foam so we could cut it down. So actually this, the length of this mattress is a full size, um, full length. The width is a little smaller than a full, but bigger than a twin. Um, and you can actually see with, with the design of this trailer, um, with this like out shooting part <laughs> we've actually like extended the the bed part so if you come on back in here um you can see if i if i pull away this um we just put this pillow in place to kind of like hide that that incline and then we can shove our pillows up here so we get even more length and you can see that it goes far um this will be underneath the kitchen um, and so let me show you my height. All right, I am, what am I? I'm like 5'4", okay? And so usually I have another pillow right here and I've got plenty of room down here. And there's also plenty of room for like two people, right? Because my husband and I took this out on our honeymoon. All right, let's see. Oh, so this is our moon roof, also known as a sunroof, but we only use it at night because we don't spend much time in here otherwise. Um, I fitted everything with, uh, Reflective covering, so we also have these coverings for the windows, and then all of this fabric matches um, so that we have curtains. So all of our, our curtains are here that we can we can open up, and they are tied in or hooked in at the top and the bottom, so that nothing's really moving uh, uh, while we are moving while we're traveling. And 
see we can get these windows to open and stuff like that so that's kind of nice at night we can get a cross breeze and the same thing is happening over here let's see we've got some led lights here which uh are not very bright right now but at night is it's just the perfect amount of light that we need to um just like get ready for bed i don't know we could like read in here change do what we need to Okay, so this is the vent that we have at the top, which my husband showed you from the outside. And it's just a just a twist up. And then we um, we put a little USB run fan in here. And uh, so we can have air either blowing in or out, depending on which way we face it. And then this is just hooked up to a USB. So when we don't have power, when we're not plugged in, then we can just put a USB battery pack on here and then run the fan. And it would run all night without any problems. Let's see, and then up here we, we've got some storage. Um, we would mostly put our clothes up here. Right now you can see the reflective gear from the windows. Um, we've got this nice little, almost like a, a nightstand kind of desk area. Um, this is where I would put our, like our, my glasses or our water bottles, phones and everything, um, which was really nice because we've got this outlet over here in case we need to charge anything at night. And then this, this here is probably one of our favorite parts, which you will not see this on any uh, commercially available trailer. But this is, this is our little pass-through window um, or pass-through cabinet, yes, for, um, we put snacks in here. And so this is accessible from both sides. So um, at dinner the night before, anything that we want, we'll like, if we know we want it later, we can just stick it right in there. And that way when we're in here and ready for bed and like closed up for the night, we don't have to go all the way around, open up the kitchenette and grab some food. We can just, we can just grab it right from here. So now let's check out the kitchenette. Um, we've got these clips holding, holding the door down. And then this usually takes two people to open up. It is fairly light though. Let's see if I can do it myself. Um, we thought about, any more money on this we would get um what are they called gas struts yeah gas struts so that you just open it up and it holds it up but for us this worked just fine and whenever we're traveling these um two supports just fit on top of the bed do you want to do the tour back here no go ahead okay Sounds coming over <laughs> can i just record anymore keep going yeah <laughs> okay. oh okay. you didn't stop it no Okay, so all of these cabinets we designed ourselves and they are uh, pretty particular in the way that they are set. So you'll notice that this one is um, kind of off center and this is so that when you open it up, you have room for like a full size um, cooler under here. And this, this um, cabinet is a lot thicker than any of our other ones because it was our intention to put our camp stove right on here um, so that when we open it up, the camp stove would be right there, but um, we didn't get around to that. But we do have some heavy duty hinges over here. And then usually our, our water container would go under here, but we all, we have a spare wheel. Um, let's see, and then up in here, we usually just put like our, our kitchen supplies. It's not really stocked right now because we haven't been out much, but we've got like our, our salt and pepper and dishes, and we've got some pots and pans. And then over here, we've got some cutlery and dishes right now. Um, that's um, also the pass-through cabinet. Yeah, right. This is also the pass-through cabinet underneath. Um, let's see, we would also put a lot of storage up in here, um, but then uh, we found out that when we were on the road, a lot of things would just come falling down. So halfway through, we just got this curtain rod and stuck it up there. And then everything that was up there pretty much just stayed. That was enough, um, an on-the-road fix. And so usually we have food, food all up in there. And then let's see, one last thing to put out in here is that, come on closer, is that we have um, outlets back here. So if we were plugged in, then we could put any appliances that we needed. What do you want me to show here? Just the door handles. Look at these beautiful door handles. This was actually my idea, but my husband executed it very nicely. This is so we don't, we didn't have any extra parts or anything like that. 
Oh, I will point out one of my husband's favorite things, and that is that each of these hinges, we got these from a reseller shop, or what is it? Restore. Restore. Salvation Habitat, Army. Habitat for Humanity Restore. Oh, yeah. And uh, all of these hinges, each one is different, so that's, that's kind of fun. Oh, I'll also point out that we have one light up here. It does absolutely nothing. It's yeah, not enough. It's terrible. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. So uh, you guys are probably wondering, uh, well, what, what possessed us to build this camper in the first place? I mean, that seems like a crazy thing to do. I mean, uh, we, we built this thing that during, well, this, the last semester of our, of our college career, we started in January and it took us all the way up till finals week. We were even completing it. <laughs> we got married. We got married right after our finals and we were completing the trailer oh i think it wasn't the, the night before, before but the, it was definitely the night before the night before the night before the night before our <laughs> wedding right um well i mean there's a couple things we're kind of eclectic hobbying people we don't just do the normal thing that that everybody else does so so a kind of cookie cutter honeymoon wasn't really appealing to us because it's where you you go and you spend thousands of dollars and you get a good experience and you have a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but you don't have anything to show for it, right? right? You come yeah. away with nothing, maybe souvenirs and you had a good time, but uh, memories, like, pictures, but that's it. The idea behind this was we, we'd build it uh, and, and we'd do a good job where we could, but we wouldn't like spend a whole lot of money. It would be comparable to a honeymoon. So we initially targeted our price around what 1500 mm -hmm. 12 1200 something dollars mm -hmm. uh this ended up being actually 2000 uh, not too sad about that uh, we when... stopped keeping track after 1500 yeah so wedding planning and finishing up college <laughs> just kind of fell by the wayside right but our rationale was that if we uh if we built this then we'd have it we'd get to keep it and we could use it f for camping from from then on exactly mm -hmm. and so I feel like a traditional honeymoon, you go out for a week or so, right? And so the, the thought was here, once we have the, the housing pretty much taken care of, um, what it costs like $6 to stay at a campsite. So we were able to go out and it was, um, it was the summer after we graduated. So we had a few months of months of vacation before um, we started grad school. Mm -hmm. And so we actually spent 19 days in it because we could. We had the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, we did, oh, you want to go? No, go ahead. We did a lot of planning on the road. So, um, as you can tell, we don't have any like air conditioning or heat or anything like that. We took this out in late May, early June, and we pretty much just followed the weather. Um, I remember we wanted to stop at the Grand Canyon and, um, we couldn't, it was going to get too cold. So, um, you want to talk about where we went? Sure. We uh, we first went to uh, Colorado to Rocky Mountain National Park. Stayed there for a while. Um, that was beautiful. Spent a couple days there. And and the way that we would do this is it was early enough in the season that it was first come first serve mm -hmm. uh, campsites. So we would roll into town and then park overnight somewhere because we usually spend a long day driving. Uh, park overnight somewhere and. Uh, Usually it'd be like a Walmart parking lot or a Costco or some some kind of grocery store <laughs> right. or all-purpose store. Uh, and then we would get into the campsite early that morning and grab one of those first-come, first-served campsites that was being emptied. That worked almost without fail. I don't think we ever had were turned away from a campsite. We were always able to... Mm. A good spot, too, because we were rolling in the morning. Get somewhere, yep. Um, so that's how it worked. After Rocky Mountain National Park, we went to Death, Arches. Arches. Well, we drove Death through Arches. Valley, it was yeah. raining, so we didn't stay. Mm -hmm. And then we went to stopped through Death Valley, Death Valley and made it as far as Sequoia National Park in California. Um, really cool place. <laughs> Check that out. We really liked it there, so yeah. we just we would have in our mind, okay, we'll stay here two days, and at Sequoia, mm -hmm. we're like, we should stay another. Oh, let's let's stay another. And yeah. we just we just stayed as long as we wanted. And we would when we would get tired of a place, we'd be like, "All right, it's time to move on." And then we'd 
see where the weather would take us. Go fishing, do whatever. Then we came back down, went to the Grand Canyon area, stayed there, uh, hiked all the way down into the Grand Canyon and back up. That was fun and tiring. Um, and then stopped by Branson and came back. So yeah, we've, we've been all over in this thing and this thing has uh, stood, <coughs> stood the test, I think. We haven't had any real big issues in it that, that we've, at least nothing that's been insurmountable. Yeah. There were a few fixes we made on the road, like that um, curtain rod. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> what else? Actually, that might have been it. I hope you enjoyed our, this build video. We really had a good time building it. We have probably had as much fun building it as we did taking it out. Oh, yeah. Um, many, many memories were made in this yeah. place. The build was, uh, we call that marriage counseling. Right, B yes. Building it. Since we built that, we knew we could do anything. So that's right. If you're thinking about doing something like this, give it a try. Find some friends that are willing to help. Right, um, right. And you can do it. Right. That's another thing. We didn't have too much building experience before we started, um, no. but we we found some friends. We did a lot of research, and we made it work. Yep. All right, guys. Take care. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it.